This is 757 Saturday Sports Talk with Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young on ESPN Radio 94.1. All right, we are back here at the Hoop Group Southern Jam Fest. It's been a busy, busy show already with Hour 1. We had on the program, if you missed it earlier, Junior Burrow, head basketball coach at Norfolk Collegiate, former NBA player with the Boston Celtics, UVA standout, as well as Trevor Dorsey, head basketball coach of Peninsula Catholic. And in the first segment of the show, we had on John Krikorian, head men's basketball coach at Christopher Newport University. We're hoping to get by. We don't have enough time to get everybody we want to get on here, but we're going to try to get on either... uh, possibly Josh Merkel of Randolph-Macon. We're going to hope to get on Xavier Brown, the recent JMU signee who uh, is playing out here with Team Loaded Virginia. His father, Chris Brown, by the way, is now the new head basketball coach at Smithfield High School. Got some news this week that Smithfield has dismissed its football coach, Devondre Bazemore. We'll try to get Ed's take on that at some point, if not today, maybe next week, as uh, we've got all kinds of people walking by, shaking hands, kissing babies, getting drinks, getting all kinds of things. And Steve Keller going to join us here Coming up from the Hoop Group, the Southern Jam Fest, our one and only friend that we have on here annually here at the event. So we'll pop on Steve and uh, talk with him, and Ed will get his headset here in just a moment. Dino, it's been a hectic morning. How are you, my friend? I haven't talked to you yet live this morning. Uh, I'm doing all right. Uh, I'm not having as much fun as you, obviously. I'm here all by myself in the studio here in Virginia Beach, but uh, glad good. to see the event is uh, good. Enjoyed the uh, Junior uh, junior Burrow interview. Very good. Yeah, he was fun to talk to. And uh, Ed's drinking a Mountain Dew, which I can't drink those sugary drinks anymore since I dropped 80 pounds. But we now have a special guest. Uh, He's looking great. He's sitting poolside. He's got ladies. He's got basketball. He's got all kinds of things. Our good pal from the National is it Recruiting Report, I think it is. Did I get that right, Steve? Right. Steve Keller with us here on ESPN Radio 94 point. Yep, he's got the binder. National Recruiting Report, one of the very best in the biz, and his notes are I just, top notch. I just jumped into this man. I didn't even ask him. I got his notebook. I'm looking through. He's got all his notes. And he's got, we got all these look, phone numbers. If, if we have, if we have Ed, uh, Jimmy, and Al, if we have Ed look through uh, Steve and my notebook. Oh, Ed your notebook, forget it. Yeah, yeah your looks like it did. Steve, you in, might in be able school. to decipher. You might be able to decipher some of it. His How notebook. No wonder in high school was the best nine years of his life. I can't read his writing. I don't know what the heck he's putting down there. <laughs> Steve's got real stuff. Good morning. How are you? I'm just tremendous. And you guys are back. Good as ever. Yeah. Just rolling along, man. COVID's not going to stop this guy. No. You know how he goes. One Ed's thing about stop. you two is you never shut up. And, <laughs> this and, is and exactly you know right. Why? And it's the way it's supposed to be. That's and right. Hey, there's, if you listen to you guys, there's always pearls of wisdom coming out of them ruby lips from somewhere. <laughs> I'm telling you. We don't yeah. say anything you can't use somewhere. That's exactly So yeah. figure that one out and you'll yeah. understand it. Why yeah. we don't have a national show, I have no idea. And I see all these other bimbos. Tom Brady, somebody tell me if this is right. T- tell me if this is right. This dude is going to come off the football field in another year, two, or three, or whenever, and make $37 million to say why the gra- a guy ran right instead of left. Am I right or wrong? You're not, and listen, you've got a better looking cartoon picture than Tom Brady. Now, he might look yeah, better in real life than you. Well, but he's hey. got, a, he got a model for wiping off. But you could have had me for 100000 yeah. and I would have I would have set the whole stuff up. And, and a you Mountain Dew, you've been good. Yeah. Mountain Dew at 100 grand, you're good. And right? I'm good. It's it's the fact that you haven't thrown for all them touchdown passes. And, and I'm not Tom Brady. That's you're right. right. Exactly you're exactly right. right. Yeah, you haven't won enough Super Bowls. And well, some people say I won't have enough, but I'm having won enough games. In high school, anyways, to get something. So we're not the only ones with pearls of wisdom. Steve's got plenty of those as well, and you've been doing this for quite a long time. What year did you start with the NRR? Um, first, first year that I actually started the recruiting service was October of 1986. Okay, but yeah. I can remember the love of the game and coming to D.C. in the late 60s for basketball. Oh, it's, it's mean, a joy. I mean, yeah. we had on a few years ago when Ed wasn't here, we had on Kenny Anderson with us, so I know we've yeah, got so many stories. Right. We just yeah. talked with Junior yeah. Burrow, played yeah. in the NBA. There's just so many great memories. And when you come out here every year, Steve, even though the game is changing and all the elements with NIL and transfer, which we could certainly delve into, you still come away. Like last night, we're watching – I think it was Boo Williams suffer a tough loss to Virginia Havoc. Curtis yeah. Blair is going to Liberty. And Tamias Bracey, who I know was one of your favorite kids you watched last night. Yeah, oh, yeah. Tamias Bracey was outstanding. I mean, no more than 5'8 in high heels. And yet he just ran the show. He was the difference maker in that game. And um, hit shots. And he just you could just tell sometimes point guards are real floor generals. 
and he is a floor general. He runs things. He gets things set up. He gets the right people the ball at the right time. And then as soon as you slack off of him, he realizes he can knock down that three. And I think that's a guy that because of his size and because of the look in the layup line, a lot of people are going to miss. But I think that kid could help a lot of low Division One programs. Do you enjoy watching? I'm not sure if I've asked you this question before. Do you enjoy watching as much the big hallmark marquee level guys as we see one of our favorites, Lamar Burton, who we're going to get on the show here in a little bit, a hoop group legend as well. Yes, he uh, is. Doing NBA yes, work as well. Yes, he is. Do you enjoy as much watching the Dewan Wagners of the world, the Imani Bates we watched last year, or do you enjoy as much, if not more, uncovering some of those gems like a Bracey or this kid from a higher level, a Team Richmond? It's not getting as much notoriety, but your report as well as the you know rankings, or I should say the reports and news of, of people covering this might get that player on the radar for somebody. Yeah, I, I, and, and when you said it, it's as much. Obviously, you like to see you like to sit down and watch guys that that have the potential to be in the NBA because of the plays they make and the things they do. But a lot of times, somebody will say to me something like DJ Wagner. They'll say, "Hey, what do you think of DJ Wagner?" And, or something. Are you going to write something on DJ Wagner? And I go, "Hey, Ray Charles can see he's good, but but it's fine and." The guy, these these guys that are complete or relative unknowns, unknowns are just only known right in their local area, and then you see them and you kind of get them on the map a little, and then later on they actually go somewhere and get a chance and prove that, prove themselves. Now, Steve, I got to ask you, all of this is exciting to see, and we got guys that are going to eventually go to NBA, guys going to high level unknowns becoming knowns and going to do their thing but what is the negative all this is brought and you know where i'm going where kids think and we talk about this all the time we have you on because i want people listening to understand what is the negatives i.e parents thinking well my kid plays au so he's going to be going to uh syracuse right and you might be saying uh if he gets a D2 offer, he better jump on it quick. Exactly. What right. yeah. What has all this in your mind? Things you've been seeing some great balls since the sixties. What in your mind is is you're saying? I wish this wasn't here with all this. Well, it it, it, it is the fact that there is so much going on. I can remember, I can remember back in the in the in the early eighties even. Um, the, I was only aware of two big AAU events in the in the whole year. There was a guy that did a thing called the Delaware Shootout back in again back in the eighties and Sonny Hill out of Philly did his super his his uh, future stars team tournament. And so there there was just a few chances to do something and there wasn't so much and again let's say let's say it. Remember today 16 year old kid has a good game and look how many media people we got here look how many people we got actually running media off their cell phone and and everybody's being interviewed everybody every every, every, we have everything going on and it makes the kids it makes the kids think that they had that they are are on the fast track to go and like I was to the NBA, like I was talking about um, one of the leagues, I guess they have a 24 second shot clock. And I said, where'd they get that weird number? 24 seconds. Yeah, where'd that come from? Oh, Who made that's that? what the NBA does. Yeah. So everybody that plays in that league thinks, well, they're grooming me for the NBA. So I guess in a couple of years, I'm going to be on the Sixers or the Celtics. <laughs> Or we, the Mavericks. We've something. had that argument, Steve, over the air, and, and Ed's one that's, I believe, I don't want to speak for him, but is not in favor of the shot clock being implemented in Virginia at this moment. Certainly some private schools play with it. I, my opinion of it is I'm okay with it if you give me some data, but there's a lot of things that we say are needs and wants. I think we want a shot clock. It could be beneficial. I don't know that it's necessarily a need at the high school realm. What's your feeling of it? I imagine it might be different in Jersey than it is in Virginia. And what's your uh, well? Take? Jersey doesn't have a shot clock either. Okay. Now, what I'm and I'm not. I don't have a problem. I'm in favor of a shot clock. But again, 
The NBA is 24 seconds. So 30 or 36? or College is 30. Okay. Why not make it 35 or 40 for high school? Okay. Uh, I, what I don't want is I don't want people to go into a stall with two and a half minutes to go in a game. But there's one, I think, misnomer. Somebody just quoted me something about, um, again, a tournament that had the shot clock, and they said there was, I don't know, 612 games played, and there were only 14 shot clock violations in 612 games. Well, that's fine, but that's because the kids know already they have the clock in their head. They already know once you get down to 10, there's not going to be a shot clock violation because I'm going to take a fadeaway 24-footer that misses the rim by four feet. And nobody, I'd like to know more on how many bad shots are taken late because in the shot clock. It's like a shot so, chart type. Of, I mean, so yeah. I don't have a problem with a shot clock because I don't want kids to, I don't want teams to pull the ball out. I mean, let's face it. Why did we get a shot clock in college to start with? It was because Dean Smith had Phil Ford and realized that he could go four corners. And in one of the NCAA tournament games, he went four corners with 19 minutes and two seconds to play in the second half. And he won the game, and he was smarter than everybody else. But they had to change the game or it was going to be ruined. And I don't think you see a lot of teams, including high school, Steve, again, Tell me I'm wrong in Jersey. That are pulling it out. I'm a high school coach, long time high school coach. I, I got to put my team in a situation to win whatever it takes. Years ago in this area, I was coaching Norby High School. We held the ball against Maury High School, um, um, Hampton High School, who's a tremendous team, tremendous, big time, won a state title, front line average 6'5. I had suspended three players, all three starters for missing early morning practice. We're getting ready to play them in two days. I don't know how I'm going to even touch this team. They beat us by 30 points a year before. So we went into a stall situation, I, and these were Norfolk kids, which I never believed they would do anyways, but I figured let's try. Long story short, we held the ball. We took 27 shots. We won 52-49. I think we took one shot in the fourth quarter. We held the ball at length because they didn't come out and pressure us. He had to take his big kids out. He, put a, try to put, he had to change his whole strategy. We won the game. Shot clock, I wouldn't have been able to do that. No. No, I, don't, I haven't done that since, but I wouldn't be able to do that with a shot clock. So I, that's why I tell Matt and we argue. We, I don't think we need it. Now, I've coached it. When I coached college ball, I coached a National Working League Pro Ball. I had a shot clock. So I, I know how to coach a shot clock. NBA has it because fans aren't paying money to watch a 27-18 game. But in the early day of the NBA, a lot of them games were that close anyways. And then now Dow's NBA, you'll never see that kind of situation. But those kids know. I just don't think we need it in a high school level because a lot of coaches are not going to know how to coach that time, and the kids aren't going to know how to play it. You're going to see a little bit out of whack. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, can, I can't disagree with that. Like I said, where I stand is I, I don't mind it because I don't, like the, I don't like the fact that they pull the ball out. And it, and it happens, again, you have a good game, and, and it's a one-point game or a two-point game, and then somebody with the lead – pulls the ball out with three minutes to go or something and then it kind of becomes chasing uh, chasing around i don't i don't have a problem with with us putting a shot clock in but again i don't let's admit it 15 16 and 17 year old kids they make enough mistakes on their own when you put the shot clock in you're rushing them to yes, make a mistake. As that, that's the point. And, right that's, and that's what I worry about. That's the point. Right. Get you down this, and we appreciate you stopping by, as always. Steve Keller from the National Recruiting Report here at the Hoop Group Southern Jam Fest at the Boo Williams Sportsplex in Hampton here on 757 Saturday Sports Talk on ESPN Radio 94.1. What are you looking forward to uh, the rest of the weekend most? I mean, there's going to be some exciting matchups, and always on Championship Sunday you get some compelling uh, storylines that we walk out of here with. Wow, well, yeah, and we never know what we get. We get something different all the time. Like we say, Sunday morning at the Jam Fest, it's war. I mean, things happen. And we'll see. We'll see if uh, in the end we get loaded in uh, the Scholars. I mean, the Scholars have brought down, yeah, t- tremendous players. Three of the top 15 players in the uh, country, is I, that correct? I, 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 something like in that, my right? mind it is, for yeah. sure, yeah. DeJuan Wagner, the real deal? Uh, yeah, DeJuan's the real deal. The big kid, Aaron Bradshaw, the seven-footer, yeah. I think he's the best rebounder in the country in that class. And the, and the kid, Mc, uh, Mackenzie McBacco, the 6'8 uh, wing who's got a strong body. I mean, he's 
he's got NBA written all over him. So you got those three guys, and then there's several others that are good, though. So, you know, there's there's a lot going on. For I'd sure. love to put Steve to the test one of these years and say, do his all hoop group Southern Jam Fest tournament teams with the players stuff. That'd be fun to do one year, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, That'd and I'd have, but I'd probably have to go back through notes and brush up. You've because, got them, though. But I, I might have them, but some of my memory tends to fade, and I might name ten guys, and then somebody would go, what about that guy? And then I would go, oh, oh, yeah, he's the best. You know, so, so, yeah. We kid us a lot of great memories. Yeah. Always a pleasure, and we'll get you back on again sometime soon. we got to get you when you're in town in our studio for an hour. That'd be fun. Uh, that'd call be in. a lot of fun oh, yeah, be sometime. We oh, always yeah. say that, but we ne- we got to get him. Now, yeah, yeah. His, it's hard to get his agents and everything, and the money yeah, they yeah. demand is hard. Yeah, it's I, Brady-like, but, right? Well, well let, let's have my people talk to your people. That's right. And our people don't talk long, so <laughs> we've got to get him in because I know there's stories. There's so much I want to talk to him about, the college level, the pro level. Tie it all together because this guy's been around and he knows it. And the thing I was, Steve, I always tell you this every time. You're not one of these guys that can, quote, be bought. You see it. You, you've seen enough players. You, you know basketball. You know certain levels of what kids should be. And I appreciate that. As a coach, I appreciate that because you're a real deal. Tells it like Thank it is, you. like you. Yeah, there you I go. I don't know. And I and it's always an honor for me to come down here, Matt and Ed, and and be with you guys because you do, you guys do a good job. Appreciate it. Thank and you, you so work much. at it. You do and as well. Like I said, you always got an opinion. We yeah. got something to say, whether yeah. and it's for somebody. Just a matter of who's listening to get what we got to say about them. Yeah. We keep the winners going from Steve Keller. We got coming up next the uh, Division Three National Championship head coach Josh Merkel and then Lamar Barrett here at the Hoop Group Southern Jam Fest. Keep it tuned right here to Ed Young's favorite radio station. What is it? I keep telling people every time ESPN Radio 94.1.